Atlantic Ocean is heating up very fast with three different tropical systems that could develop over the next seven days, one of which is already in the Gulf of Mexico, another one is in the western Atlantic Ocean, and that one could become a big hurricane as we go into next week, and there's also a tropical wave that's coming just off the coast of Africa. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about all these tropical waves and why there is legitimate concern that we could see a big hurricane as we go into the first couple of weeks of September. Now, we are going to begin with what's happening across the entire Atlantic Basin right now, and we're going to go west to east, beginning with the Gulf of Mexico, which is actually where we do have currently a little spinning area of some showers and thunderstorms. And this isn't as definitive as it was yesterday, but we are expecting a reinitiation of showers and thunderstorms later this morning and throughout the afternoon. And we should end up seeing a little bit more of a definitive area of shower and thunderstorm activity just off the coast of Texas and as well as Louisiana. This is actually where we're watching right now right now for a low chance of a tropical depression or even a weak tropical storm to develop over the next couple of days. So something to watch for. Not really a big concern for the United States, but we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes and what that might end up bringing. Back over in the Atlantic Ocean and the Atlantic Basin in our main development region, we do have two tropical waves, our first of which is kind of just meandered in all this convection that we have east of the Lesser Antilles. Right now, no definitive area of circulation, which is good news for now, but over the next few days, we do think that there will be a more definitive area of a low pressure center and that will eventually become potentially our next tropical system in the Atlantic Ocean. And then all the way back across the ocean we have our third tropical wave that we are going to be watching but it has a low chance of development right now. Now in the entire Atlantic Ocean this is what it looks like. We got three different areas of development. We got just one coming off the coast of Africa as of a couple of days ago. We got our main one that we are watching for very closely which this is what the forecast is going to be mostly on today is this particular tropical wave where there is currently about a 50% chance of development over the next seven days as this tropical wave will go towards the Lesser Antilles and then eventually into the Caribbean Sea. And when, you know, tropical systems go into the Caribbean Sea, they can go completely haywire. And with how favorable the environment is right now across the entire Atlantic Basin, this thing could go crazy. So that's why we're watching this very closely. And that's why I think this is a legitimate concern, especially as we're going into September. Also, we have a little tropical system just off the coast of Texas and as well as Louisiana. As of right now, this is, again, just a low chance of development, and it's not going to be moving much. It'll be mostly just a rain threat for both Texas and Louisiana. Now let's talk a little bit more about that tropical system that is attempting to develop just off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. This is what it looks like this morning, just some shower and thunderstorm activity just offshore. Right now, this is, again, not really a big concern when it comes to becoming like a hurricane, for example, because I don't expect that at all with this. I think overall, we're just going to be talking about some showers and thunderstorms today. Wouldn't even be surprised if we saw like a brief little spin up or maybe even a water spout offshore as we go into tonight or tomorrow. By tomorrow, the HRRR model still has a spinning just south of Louisiana. Louisiana. And notice how it's just a broad area of low pressure. And there are some showers and storms that try to spin around this to try to become a little bit more tropical. But overall, just does not look like this is going to have a great time organizing. With that said, I still wouldn't be surprised if this did become a tropical depression or maybe briefly a weak tropical storm. And this will be here probably for at least a few days and then it'll kind of just move inland very slowly. Um, there is also a potential that this goes a little bit further to the east and goes towards Florida. In that case, I still don't expect much development but it is something we'll watch for in case it does try to bring some rainfall maybe up and down the east coast. Here's what we're looking at in terms of total rainfall accumulation over the next few days, and this is really just between now and tomorrow night. So just notice, again, right along in the immediate coastline is where the bulk of rain will fall. There could be some flash flooding out of this. We could see actually some areas between 6 to 10 inches of rain, so that on its own is a bit concerning. But again, it's going to be very isolated. Just stay weather aware if you're in those areas. All right, now we're going to talk more about the big story, which has been a big story for at least the last couple of days. It is this particular tropical wave that is just to the east of the Lesser Antilles that currently has a 50% chance of development over the next seven days. Now, I do want to go ahead and point this out right off the bat. There is a lot of hype already spreading across social media about this, showing big category four and five hurricanes hitting Florida or hitting Texas. It's been going around a lot because there are computer models that have shown stuff like that about 10 days from now, which keep in mind, that's a long time from now. Forecasts are usually not accurate, even seven days out, and don't 
going 10 days out is even crazier, but there is a reason why there is at least some hype here, because there are a lot of ensemble members and a lot of models that have been consistent about bringing this into the Caribbean Sea, and then eventually into the Gulf of Mexico, and from there, it could get pretty crazy. There are a couple of things that I want to point out before we go into all the models, though, and kind of give you my idea of what I think will happen. One thing I want to start out with is that we don't have really a definitive area of low pressure spin. That basically means we don't really have much to go off with, even with the ensembles right now. Until we have a definitive area of low pressure, it's going to be hard to forecast this. It's just going to be a lot of models showing a lot of different scenarios. Another thing, we are about 10 days out from this even impacting the United States, so that's another big thing to keep in mind. That is a long time. Definitely could see some big changes to the forecast between now and then. The third thing is that we still do have dry air in this part of the Atlantic Ocean, and that could play around with this system, and it could kind of choke it off and basically means that this might not really even develop into anything in the Caribbean Sea. That is why there's only a 50% chance right now of development over the next seven days. I've seen some people talking about it on social media. How is this not 100% chance of development? It's mainly because of those three reasons. I'm going to first show you two of the main computer models, and that's going to be the GFS and the European model. We're going to begin with the GFS model, and this is the most recent run from this morning. And notice what we're looking at as we go throughout the next several days. And this is by next Saturday, by the way. So this is September 7th. The GFS model does not have this developing into anything until Saturday, September 7th, which is quite a ways away. That's about seven days out from now. Once we go into Sunday, Monday, into Tuesday, the GFS model has this going into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Really quickly intensifies, by the way, in the Gulf as actually a probably about a category two to three hurricane and eventually crashes into Mexico. Now, we're going to go back 12 hours on the GFS model because this is pretty interesting stuff. This is what it showed only 12 hours ago. Showed a very similar situation. Not really much development until next Saturday. And then after that, it really explodes in the Gulf of Mexico, which by the way, the Gulf of Mexico, very favorable right now for tropical activity, which is why we are definitely concerned about this in the Gulf. If it goes into the Gulf, this thing could go haywire. And that's why I mentioned that earlier in the forecast. But look at this by Monday to Tuesday. This thing intensifies to like a 960 millibar, uh, you know, tropical system. That's a, about a category three hurricane or so, and then eventually crashes into Florida by sometime around September 10th. But one thing to keep in mind here is that 12 hours apart, how in the world did this go from going to Florida, now going to Mexico? That's why there's a lot of uncertainty right now, and that's a lot of why I'm trying to tell you here, we don't really know what's going to happen beyond today or tomorrow, because there's just not enough information right now. We don't have a low pressure center. There are going to be a lot of changes between now and then, but as I mentioned before, the big concern with this tropical wave is if it can go into the Gulf of Mexico, which I personally think that there is a pretty high likelihood that this will either go into the Gulf or the very far western Atlantic Ocean, maybe just east of Florida or something like that, so like in this area. Essentially, if it goes into this area and it doesn't have much of an issue with the dry air that's already in place and wind shear, then I do think that there is a very solid chance that we do get a hurricane and it could go really crazy because again, this, you know, the Gulf of Mexico has not been touched really other than Debbie, which is multiple weeks ago now. The water is just so favorable. It's so warm out there, even deep into the water, it's very warm. So really anything that goes into the Gulf or the very far Western Atlantic Ocean is bound to be pretty big if there's not much shear. Now, the other model I'm going to go in depth with is the European model, and this model's been handling it, at least on the most recent run, very similar to the GFS run, where it does still indicate not much development until about September 6th or 7th, and then it starts to intensify as it starts to get closer to the Yucatan Peninsula, and even after that, as we go into early the following week, around September 8th or 9th, this starts to go into the Gulf as a tropical cyclone, and from there, it will likely intensify very quickly if it does go into the Gulf. But again, these are just two models. They are still very spread out from each other. Other. I mean, again, the GFS went from Florida to Mexico literally in the matter of 12 hours. So there's a lot of spread still with these models. And that's why I'm about to show you the ensemble members, which will give you a better idea of why there's just such a large spread right now. Now, this is one set of ensemble members. And really, the reason why I'm showing you this is it gives you a pretty good idea of the spread and also the intensity that this could become. And notice a lot of these numbers, by the way, these are all pressure numbers. And a lot of the ensembles that go right into the Gulf of Mexico are indicating that this could become a relatively intense hurricane category three plus and this pressure by the way 932 that's pretty close to a cat four cat five type hurricane that's why this is definitely concerning now obviously keep in mind that this is not the only scenario there are multiple scenarios that bring this towards the yucatan as just a little tropical storm there are also some that kind of take a boomerang turn back over into the atlantic ocean and overall there's not really much development expected between now and the lesser antilles so really any development at this point would probably be somewhere in the caribbean sea that's when we have to keep a bird's eye view on this tropical 
tropical wave if it does continue its track to the west. Here's another run of ensemble members. This is a GEFS, which I think is a little bit better for this scenario because it does show you a better idea of the uncertainty that there is. I think this is a much better view of it. I think it's a lot less biased, at least with it going to the Gulf. It shows that there are multiple scenarios. There are some outliers that bring this into the Atlantic Ocean. Still, the bulk of them go towards the Caribbean, and a lot of them still go into the Gulf of Mexico, and not nearly as intense as the European ensembles, but I still think it gives you a good idea that this could definitely still go into the Gulf. I just think overall, this is a much less biased scenario, and I think the European model is just a little bit too consistent, at least for right now. I know it sounds weird, but usually when we're like 10 days out, usually you see a lot less consistency. Like, seeing this much consistency 10 days out from ensembles is definitely pretty rare. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to see this, it's just not very common. So I think overall, the GEFS gives you a better idea of the potential scenarios, but I do think the chances of this going into the Caribbean Sea and then eventually into the Gulf are still on the higher side of things. So just keep that in mind. If you are in the Gulf Coast states or even up and down the East Coast, it's a good time just to make sure that you are ready for any sort of tropical weather. Again, we are still well over seven days out from impacts to the United States that are at least major, so make sure that you're staying tuned to the channel. We'll keep you posted with the latest with unbiased and also no hype forecasts on this next tropical wave.